Uh, firstly, uh, to you all, many congratulations. Uh, that was wonderfully moving, hugely affecting, uh, and beautifully made, I thought. Um, could we start perhaps with, uh, with Sophie, executive producer? Um, tell us how, how, how it all came about, the inception of the show. Uh, uh, we, from very early on, the BBC was supportive. When Jack, Toby, um, who's in the audience, and I went to see them before a script with an idea and a conversation, they greenlit it then and there, which gave us the confidence we needed in the obviously the whole development process, the research, all, all of that. Um, fifth season came on generously and were also very supportive. So in terms of the television side of it, it was relatively straightforward. Obviously the process itself, um, you know, with all drama, you think about your duty of care, whatever drama you ever do, but this was heightened without a doubt, whether it was to our cast and crew or, 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 or um, audience ultimately, or advisors or any of those people. We, you know, approached it with rigor and nuance and care, I hope, I think. Um, and the end result is, I think, a piece of work that, uh, it's important and we can all be proud of and enjoy. And Jack, Sophie came to you with an idea. Can you say what the idea was and then what story you ended up trying to tell? Yeah, Sophie's being incredibly modest. The idea was her idea <laughs> and, uh, and she thought that there was, there was a story um, uh, worth telling here. And I've worked with Sophie and known Sophie for 20 years and immediately, uh, wanted to find a way to do it and I struggled and I couldn't find a way to do it and then and then the because I because I got very worried about the idea of parents versus the NHS how you tell that story how you end up how you tell that story without stigma so that you end up with just kind of like these are the bad guys these are the good guys how how you get inside that and then and then the idea came through discussion of um let's tell the story of a marriage um, and the, 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 these two, this couple that end up on a different side of the argument. And then suddenly everything from there became a lot easier because it became about how we capture them. Um, and thankfully with Sharon and Michael, uh, you know, we got two in incredible actors that were able to um, capture the complexity of that argument. And then, and then all the other brilliant actors in, in, in the middle of that too. And Sharon, we have here, uh, why did you want to, to take the part? <clears throat> well, I didn't want to, <laughs> didn't want to take it. <laughs> and now I know why. Now I remember why. Um, I, I was mid-filming Bad Sisters and um, all of my agent who's in the audience there. She said, well, that the script has come in from um, Jack Thorne and I'd wanted to work with Jack for so long. And... And um, so, but then I was aware that I was, you know, mid doing something and, and they would be filming very soon after it ended. But of course I had to read it because it was Jack and I read it and it just destroyed me. And, and I felt really nervous to tell you the truth. Cause, uh, but then we had a Zoom, didn't we? And, um, and then I felt a bit less nervous and uh, and I guess I had that feeling that, um, well, I felt really connected to Nikki, I felt really connected to her point of view. Like I really felt it deeply, and and the and I guess the thought of someone else playing her, I didn't love. Um, <laughs> but then, but then um, I spoke to Michael, and I and I think the thing that I was most scared about is, I mean, actually, my daughter's in the audience. She's nineteen, and ever since she came along, I've been an emotional wreck, and uh, <laughs> and. Um, and I, I was just worried about getting through it really and not sort of, you know, um, just going to pieces. And we talked a lot, didn't we, about how, how you manage that and how we, we, how we do it. We managed <laughs> it, just about. Um, yeah, I, um, I think that was it. Just really the thought of being part of this group of people and, and to get to tell a story like that and and for it not to feel like, I know like a lot of it is hard going and it kind of has to be, but the way Jack and Michael talked about it was how important it was to show the sort of them being a family, you know, and, and, and the beautiful moments and, the, and the, the light moments and the moments of love and, and the joy of that, you know. Um, 
And it felt like a really great way to approach telling that story. Yeah. She was still she was still editing Bad Sisters during the filming of this. <laughs> you knock on a caravan admit. door and you walk in and she'd be at her computer watching a cut. That's wrong, Bad John. Sharon was, was always was, I mean, in character. <laughs> thinking, <laughs> thinking only about well, the character. You know, that some of that is true. I was doing that and it makes it's me sound amazing like that, a No, it's amazing that you're able to do both things at once. It was, <laughs> she's phenomenal. Um, did you have any misgivings, Sharon, about a part that is... Uh, on the face of it, is a straight role that's heavy. You're very well known for your comedy, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I was. I, I, I have been too nervous to watch it until now, so that's not my first time um, seeing it this evening. Um, yes, for sure. Um, but it's cast so um, beautifully against type, I think, even, you know, seeing Kevin Eldon. Um, and and um, Pippa, what's Pippa? He plays the judge. What's her surname? He would. Pippa Hayward, you know, like unexpected people in it, I think was just a really um, smart and 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 um, unexpected route. And yeah, I, I, I do. I, I feel a bit nervous even now, you know, but um, but I think it was the right approach because I sometimes think that TV that has a message like that can feel like a bit of a slog, you know, it can feel like a, a trial and we don't want it to feel like that. We want it to feel like a, you know, a family story that kind of draws you in. And it's tough because it, it has to be tough, you know. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, I f yeah, I feel, I mean, I feel nervous, but I feel better now. I mean, you know. <laughs> she smashed it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of comedy in it, actually. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not... I mean, that was really important. I mean, the weird thing is, um, I, I laughed more doing this show than I ha than I have <laughs> on a lot of things. We didn't we just yeah. <laughs> constantly laugh. It was like the, the material time. was so, you know, it was it was so tough, and what was happening was so tough, and we all like went through the ringer <laughs> on it. But but we just laughed <laughs> constantly. Um, all all the all the actors involved in the show who 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 you know came in. I, I hope would say the same thing. It was a really sort of happy work environment, wasn't it? Because we kind of needed that release from, you know, the heaviness of a lot of the material. And, and, and Neve, um, can you tell us how you came to be cast? And, and I mean, that must have been an incredibly challenging role. <laughs> so t take us through what it was like. Yeah, I mean, I've been linked to the project now for about three years. I, I'm 16 now and I started auditioning first when I was 13. So. It's been in my heart for a while. Um, I got the audition first in the first lockdown. I was on holidays with my family in the lovely Kerry. Um, and I got the audition and I was in my hotel room all sweaty and disheveled. And we had to dismantle the whole hotel room to try and find a, a blank wall that I could film it on because I had just finished my run as Tiny Tim in Jack's A Christmas Carol in Dublin. And I fell in love with his style of writing. And so we got it in and I was like, right, well, I have to do this. Kind of the same way Sharon said, I couldn't see anyone else playing her. I got very protective over her really quickly. So from there, it was a series of Zoom audition and Zoom audition. Um, and then it was radio silence for about six months because everything on the entertainment industry got cut off because of COVID. And I was like, right, well, didn't get the part. That's that's great. Chuffed about that. Um, and then I was, <laughs> I was sat on my couch one day and we got an email asking if I could retape one of the scenes and if I'd grown too much. And I'm sure as you can see, I'm a very short person. So I hadn't grown, thankfully. Um, and so I sent that in and from there, it was a waiting game to see who would play my parents. And I got cast in no, December. And it was probably one of the best days of my life ever. <laughs> so, yeah. it, it's a terrific performance, I must say. Can you, you. Uh, perhaps with Michael, can you take us through some of those scenes where you're there in the, on the hospital ward? I wonder how, maybe Michael, if you go with Neve and say how you filmed that. Yeah, I mean, that was, because I read the script as you do, scripts come in, you read them and you think, that's a fantastic script, Jack Thorne. Then you get the job, you realize, now I'm actually gonna make this thing. And a big part <laughs> of that was 
you know, a child has got to lie in a hospital bed for quite a long time. Um, and even for an adult to do that is difficult acting. So yeah, I was, I was really worried. But Neve and I chatted about it. I spoke to Neve's mum, Deirdre, as well. And I just realised that Neve had been through so much medical intervention in her life compared to the rest of us, that her uh, approach to it was far more um, mature, I would say, than, than any of us uh, had imagined. And so she was like, right, let's get the pipes in, let's get the, the cannulas <laughs> on, and, and chatting away with the nurses. All, all our nurses who were doing anything active were actually paediatric ICU nurses. Yeah, um, that's amazing. So that was quite nice. So they'd be interacting with uh, Chizzy, who's here tonight, uh, and, and Noma. And yeah, so this incredible to have real nurses there. So I think for Neve as well, to be working with real nurses. So yeah, Neve, how did you find that experience? Um, it was challenging to begin with. I am a very chatty and active person, so it was hard to stay still. Um, but <laughs> I found my ways around it. I came up with little techniques. I would sing little songs in my head to keep my mind distracted. And what was really important to me is that when a person is in a coma, they still have some sort of involuntary movements. Like you'll see sometimes my eyes twitch. And some people have this conception that they just stay dead still. And yes, that is the majority of it, which I got quite good at. Um, but it was really important to me to get those little subtleties right. So I would work with the nursing team and they would tell me like what muscles would do what and where would relax and what would be floppy than other parts. And sometimes the eyes go in like a REM state. And so you have to, you have to figure out how to do it whilst still staying very pensive. So I had a great team of nurses behind me and I just did a lot of learning and keeping it in my brain and I would try and present it as much as possible. I, most of us, well, me and Michael, especially, <laughs> were really jealous. We just like... <laughs> it was a I, very I, Getting a part where you just lie down the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, God. <laughs> it was a very, very comfy bed. I'll give it that much. Um, I was really grateful that it was comfy. Not like most hospital beds. Um, and the tubes were quite interesting because I thought it would be really uncomfortable, but we had ways around it. I So they are all in me, but not as far down, obviously. So I would always have it in my mouth. And every so often, sometimes we'd be filming on that set for like eight hours a day. And to take it off, it's stuck to my face. And when you take it on and you put it off, it would leave these little red marks sometimes. So what they would do is they would unhook the main tube and I would just be wheeled out of the room with my chaperone and we'd go down the hall singing a song while I went to the loo and I'd have all these tubes in my mouth and it, it, it <laughs> probably looked very odd but we I kind of just got really used to it and we'd stick a straw in every time I needed a drink of water and we found our ways it worked out. Your eyes closed when Michael and Sharon were acting when the camera wasn't on you. Or did you I watch? Did that, you watch yeah. it happen? I did. Yeah, I, I think I did. You missed I out hope this I did. performance. <laughs> right in front of you. But when it when it you know I mean later yeah. on into the into the series, there's some pretty you oh. know tough scenes and and I, I, I was just. <laughs> Such an extraordinary. Oh, you're selling it well. More tough. Yeah, it's no, no, no. tougher, tougher. But lots of really light and fun stuff as well. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, happy but to. those scenes, doing those with you, were really e extraordinary, yeah. you know. I am. Um, I would keep my eyes open for the rehearsals so that I could see what you were doing because I wasn't going to miss out on that experience. <laughs> um, and I remember I have this really distinct memory the first time that Alison saw me in that kind of state. She, she was Katie. very. Yeah, she plays Katie. Um, she was very specific about keeping it hidden. So she didn't come in to the room for the rehearsals. And the first time that she saw me, it really freaked her out because we'd gotten quite close. And so yeah. to see me like that freaked her out. And I think that reaction really, it made it very clear to me how people would see it. Because when I look at it, I just see me lying down with some well done makeup on my face. <laughs> so it does make me giggle, but I hope I did my job well enough to convince you all. <laughs> you definitely did. Um, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Thank you. I, I wonder, Jack, um, it's, you've got Sharon Horgan and Michael Sheen in the leads, but you obviously went to great pains to make sure that this is Marnie and Katie's story as much as theirs. Yes. How important was that to you? Why did you do it that way? Um, it, I mean, it's a, uh, uh, I've spent m my, a, a, a large portion of my professional life trying to tell disabled stories and trying to uh, bring the disabled experience to the screen and it would and and the 
and the real challenge with this was I didn't want it to be a, a story that was about non-disabled people reacting to disability. Um, and so through the script process, we worked quite hard on trying to um, get uh, uh, Neve's story, um, uh, Marnie's story, as, uh, as complex as possible um, and to get as much time with her as possible so that we gave her life within it. Um, and a huge proportion of that is the really complicated relationship between her and Katie um, and the the sibling dynamics and all that worked. Uh, and another huge portion of it is uh, Lenny Rush down there, superstar, just won a BAFTA. Um, uh, 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 and uh, uh, as the... Um, as the as the love interest, yeah, right. um, yeah. Uh, uh, and um, yeah, <laughs> so just trying to trying to make um, Marnie's story as alive as possible, while while this these you know these deadly questions are going on. And Sharon, when you accepted the role, did you go out and research? Did you try to meet people who've been in a similar situation, or did you feel that you implicitly understood Nikki's position? Um, well, there's a certain amount of research, you know, there is a certain amount of, um, you know, watching um, parents who are in a similar situation tell their stories and, and you know, um, that sort of um, viewing that relationship through, you know, um, other people's perspective. But, um, but no, I, I kind of felt like I connected with her because when my... Um, 19 year old is in the audience now. She um, was very ill when she was um, about 16 months old and um, she had meningococcal septicemia. And, um, you know, we were in a position where we didn't know if she would live or die for a short amount of time. And um, I really, really specifically remember the feeling of just whatever you have to do, like, I don't care just keep her alive. And it was such um, a strong memory for me, that feeling like it's in my bones and my DNA now. So I thought, yeah, that's why I had this connection with, with Nikki, you know, she's so strong, you know, and I mean, I, I, I love that scene um, with Katie when she's <laughs> talking about what, you know, that her, her mother would, you know, just keep her alive if she was just, you know, a husk or whatever, you know, but I, I completely relate to and, and, you know, having felt that myself. And it means that a lot, a lot of time is spent on the PQ, on the paediatric intensive care ward here. I wonder, Michael, how, how did you go about getting that right? Because there'll be people who watch it who will have been in that situation and they'll know. Yes, there's people who've been, but most people haven't seen it, haven't experienced it. So we went to but a few different advisors from different hospitals went to Paddington to their pediatric ICU. It's quite different. I expected a very much a, a kid's hospital vibe, and it wasn't that at all. It was all designed to basically be calm for the parents who are at this incredible sort of stressful juncture. So uh, myself and the fantastic design team led by Alison Butler is here tonight. Well done, Alison. Um, we're, try, we're trying to make a to build a set, to build a, a PQ through a few different places we were that felt as true to that. So we may well get criticism saying, well, is this true to it? But um, yeah, we went through all this research and Sean, it felt like PQ to you, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, I spent a, a lot of time there, but, um, um, you know, in Great Ormond Street and um, Homerton Hospital where they um, saved her life initially. But um, yeah, it's in it really, um, intense place to be but um and also because it's, it's quite a big part of our story and it is our precinct in, in, in some yeah. way because the rest of the time we're in a very normal british family street house and that that's the way jack envisaged it and i think hopefully we've captured that so i was trying to create something original in hospital i mean part of why i think the story works is you would never get to go into pediatric ICU. you would never get to experience this a journey with this family because in any documentary you could never get that close to a child and a family so yeah it felt like if we could get that right it would establish sort of medical basis of our, our story different crisps though 
Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah Michael, on Michael Sheen's more critical of the Chris. <laughs> he was so angry about those yeah. Chris. Yeah, we got, we got the rights to wine gums, but not Chris. <laughs> uh, so we got yeah. the rights to Snickers, but not yeah. Chris. Um, that's the kind of discussions I have on set on Michael Sheen. Yeah. Let's just hope the Chris will be on here tonight. <laughs> yeah. um, just before we get some questions from the audience, I suppose one question, this one maybe for Sophie or Jack, one question you could ask of this is, what does drama do that, that documentary couldn't? God, so much. Um, I'll jump in. and then, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, Michael just said about the closeness, yeah. for sure, and, and not wanting to, or not being able to get that close. But I do think it's really important. This story is about a family and a marriage and a relationship. And will love survive? Will the family survive? That has to be drama. I mean, it, you can't go that close to people's real personal inner in, intimate emotional complexity in a way that Jack can lead us in drama. And, and for you, Jack, I mean, again, you could have, I suppose, charted a real life case, uh, as often happens in some of the dramas that are around at the moment. Why did you choose to go entirely fictional? Uh, because it didn't feel appropriate um, that, that I, I wouldn't want to tell the story story of a real couple going through this, a real family going through this, I think it would be too intrusive. And the things, I've told real stories and I've told stories that are, try to replicate real stories, but try to get inside the same truth, same questions within, within, within those, 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 those real stories. We spent a lot of time talking to people that had gone through it, talking to doctors, um, so there's an awful lot of people that have impacted on this show and have and whose stories are reflected in this show, but no one whose story is a direct reflection because that just wouldn't be fair. Um, uh, and and uh, and I hope um, and I hope that those families will find themselves um, uh, will find the reflection, but not the truth. Do you know what I mean? Like I hope they will find the factual, uh, you know, that this is no way factual, but the, but the, the, the oh, how am I expressing this so badly? <laughs> There's a kind of accuracy to yeah, it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that, you know. You've kind of expressed it already, but obviously. Yeah, well, you know, that's why, <laughs> I'm, you know, that's why I'm a writer, not a talker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I imagine that's probably a, a Jack question. Yeah, that probably is a me question. Uh, so get ready, get ready for some more brilliant scintillating chat. Um, uh, 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 um, I mean, to be honest, that's a really difficult question to answer because I hope that what we're doing is posing questions, not, not, not creating answers. I, I don't like drama that that's goes, this is the answer to this problem. I hope that what we're doing is going, this is the problem. This is this is a way that one family navigated their way through it, um, uh, but but this is not necessarily the you know this is not necessarily the the answer to how this problem will never arise again. It is an impossible thing. I mean, I'm, I'll be fascinated to read your study when it comes out because it is an impossible thing to navigate because it's dealing with questions that no one can deal with. Um, uh, we spoke. We we didn't just speak to. Uh, doctors and uh, you know we also spent a lot uh, 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 quite a bit of time with some mediators um, going through their bits of the 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 the, the process um, and they were very protective of of the bit that they do and and how we express that in the drama it's I, I don't know how it can be made better than it is um, I think care and love will go a long way and that there are frequently um, there's frequently a breakdown at some point. You you sometimes find when you look at these these cases, but often it's just that it's just impossible, and and no one has got the right thing, not no one's got the right button to push in those situations. So yeah, I I, I mean, if it's okay to say pass, but <laughs> but pass with love, um, I think that's probably probably what we can say. Yeah, more more care and more. Um, um, <laughs> More nurses? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More money for the NHS? <laughs> um, I think mean, just to jump on that, yeah. I mean, that's partly why we've got four episodes. I mean, this journey is not, we've seen the start here, but it goes in places that hopefully you don't expect it to go. And I think 
that's in a reflection back to families in these situations. It's different for every single family. There's only one story, but hopefully it goes to some pretty challenging places to, you know, to help people watching. And actually, it's important to stress. I would urge you to watch the rest of it when it comes out. Oh, yeah, that, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah, just watch it all. Please do. <laughs> just watch it. First one. <laughs>
yourself, Sean, came in very researched. Michael Lesro, but he's pretty researched. He's not here, so I can say that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Alison, very researched. No, no the, the cast came in incredibly well uh, researched and I know with a different energy. I think that that's quite nice about a family. You don't sit and practice and learn together. It makes my life a lot easier when everyone comes in well prepped. You're very well prepped. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, we sort of... Um, you know, hugged each other a lot as a well, lot. didn't we? There was a lot. I mean, of it was hugging. probably too much. I probably overly <laughs> hugged you. Never but... too much hugs, <laughs> ever. But like that sort of helped, didn't yeah. it? As well, kind of. I feel like we all got through it together. We were all very much so there for each other, and that was so important to get through it because it is a really heavy, like, conversation topic. In terms of like the research and the preparation. I almost had to sometimes remove myself from the gravity of the situation to allow myself to sort of see what Marnie would see because in a way she is still very young so I couldn't always approach it with the knowledge of knowing what I do about the situation. I did a lot of research but I feel like a lot of it just came from us getting yeah. to know each other yeah. and hanging yeah. out and hugging a lot. <laughs> we had a fantastic crew and what was really helpful often the cast are putting t tremendous emotional work in and the crew are just doing their own thing on their phones mm. whatever yeah. that wasn't the case and they were very engaged and actually it was the other way around the cast would finish the scene how was that and everyone's in tears behind yeah. monitors and boom poles because everyone's got their own life experience yeah. that they're, they're coming in with so yeah, no. And you, by the way, you I were was brilliant. As well. well, no, but Michael was brilliant at just making sure that when when he had it, he just had it, and he never felt like he was putting us through the yeah. ringer to, you know, you know, because a certain thing was wasn't right. Your lighting was amazing, yeah. but you know, it, it was he was very very protective of us, and if he felt that he he got it, a really difficult scene, and in in one go, we we just move on and. I think great. you feel that in the performance there yeah. tonight. It feels like it's it's yeah. the first time. It wasn't always the first time, maybe the second <laughs> time. Really, but yeah. <laughs>